Hey right, guys, it is a gray, gloomy, just yuck day. First full day of spring 2023 here in the great state of Texas. Certainly looks like springtime around here, but anyway, it is Tuesday, March 21st, 2023. And <laughs> you know, does life imitate art? Or the other way around. So yesterday, you know, I was um, ranting. Well, I wasn't ranting so much as letting Umer Hack rant. And he, he was started off his rant yesterday talking about this new meme that he's seeing cropping up uh, with all of these newspaper columnists talking trash about doomers. Well, I really haven't seen, you know, other than Michael Mann talking trash about Doomers, I haven't really seen this meme in action. So uh, maybe the the little, uh, whatever that would be, the Yahoo News bots were listening to my, were listening to Umer. So I open up the mainstream media today and uh, write directly out of what Umer was saying uh, from this I assume it's a fairly small newspaper. Where is this? The Tallahassee Democrat. I love I love the name of the Tallahassee Florida Democrat. You know where uh, DeSantis lives in Tallahassee. I anyway uh, titled Climate Doomism and Why It Hurts the Climate. And okay, guys, before I get into this, as the planet nibbling cranks up, I just want to make one more time this disclaimer for those of you trying to figure out who the hell I am. <clears throat> I am a doomer. Okay, I am an unrepentant, unapologetic doomer. That being said, it has never been my intention, it is not my intention, never has been my intention, never will be my intention to try to convince any non-doomer to come down this rabbit hole, all right? I have no desire to convince anybody that we are doomed. I am talking to the people who are trying to figure out whether or not we are doomed. I'm probably preaching to the choir of people who already realize we're doomed. The reason I do this with my life, and the reason this channel is called Collapse Chronicles, is I am simply chronicling the collapse of the planet as I see it. I've been doing this in various uh, manifestations for 15 years and I think this is the single biggest story in the history of humanity. Alright, I just think it's interesting. <clears throat> I am here to share this information with anybody who thinks that this is interesting. If you would rather hear about Donald Trump paying some hush money to a hooker, uh, then the single biggest story on the planet, go over there and read about Donald Trump paying hush money to a hooker. All right, that out of the way, just so you understand, I am a doomer who is trying to convince nobody to become a doomer. We're going to look at this opinion piece, this opinion piece from the Tallahassee Democrat uh, by just a man or a woman, Miles Kelsey. Who is Miles Kelsey? Miles Kelsey is a woman. Miles Kelsey, oh, she is a senior at Florida State University studying geology and environmental science in their free time, they work as an educator at Rethink 
Energy Florida, an environmental nonprofit, they are also a music lover and DJ. Okay, I only see one person here. I see one name. Miley Kelsey is a senior, but in their free time, they work and they. How many people do you see in this picture, guys? Uh, I see one person there. I have no idea who the second or third or fourth person is. So apparently Miley uh, is a little bit conflicted. So she, you know, she basically has two personalities. Uh, the one writing for the Tallahassee Democrat and the doomer chick in, in waiting, you know, realizing as a, as a senior in college, so I figure she's, what, 21, 22 years old, that Miley understands how doomed she is. And uh, so this is her, her little apocaloptimistic twin, you, you, you know, stirring up shit with the, the, the other Miley who has a brain. But anyway, I digress. So what is on the minds of the college senior, not Miley, Miles. Take it away, Miles. <clears throat> the narrative of climate doomism is that our planet is doomed, whether we act or not. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you, Miles. Or at least, you know, that Miles, since there's two, at least two Miles writing this. However, scientists overwhelmingly agree we are not doomed. Mm, scientists overwhelmingly agree we are not doomed. <coughs> I wish he had put a source for that. I guess, uh, I guess uh, Michael Mann is the overwhelming scientist who agree we are not doomed. But for many, their first encounter with climate change is fear. If learning about climate change is synonymous with hearing about predictions of our doomed future, or the ever-increasing severity of natural disasters, it can alienate people from the conversation. I don't, I don't know what conversation. I, you know, I, I spent last week in the company of hundreds of my lovable, clueless friends, and the biggest party of the year, I spent more time, you know, having social intercourse with legions of, uh, uh, of people in uh, Austin, Texas at the biggest party on the planet, never once, not one time last week, did I ever hear one word mentioned about any of this. The conversation, yes. One example of climate doomism occurred in 2019 when climate activist Greta Thunberg delivered an infamous speech. Greta stated, quote, I don't want you to be hopeful. Good for you, Greta. I don't want you to be hopeful. I want you to panic. I want you to feel fear every day. And then, I want you to act. Hmm, thank you, Greta Thunberg. This is a perfect example of climate change information that is meant to inspire, but often was internalized as climate doomism. Hmm, the kind of, me the kind of messaging that makes people feel it is too late to do anything about climate change. And when we need direct action more than ever to fight climate change, 
that is not the result we should be looking for when it comes to climate education. And other climate doomers may play an important role in the climate movement and their contributions should not be discounted. Still, while her narrative may motivate a few, fear fails to inspire long-term action and creates unnecessary, unnecessary anxiety around climate change. Climate catastrophe predictions are based on business as usual, meaning what our future would look like if we did not cut carbon emissions. Climate doomism often focuses on these predictions while leaving out the power we, meaning I guess we humans, have to shape our future and change these predictions leaving out the possibility of fighting climate change plays on fear and shock culture. However, shock is viral. News about a potential climate apocalypse garners massive amounts of traction on the internet. So for many writers, the benefit of media attention versus honest storytelling is a price they are willing to pay. Yes, you know, I guess she's talking. I'm sure this woman, oh, here we go, talking about, I was just going to say uh, this woman I'm quite sure has never heard of Umer Hack or all those other doomers over on medium.com. Yes, who are getting rich off of uh, being doomers. Oh, there was some discussion in the comments that Umer Hack is getting rich off of being a doomer, but uh, we'll have to check in with some other doomers on Medium, but we're going to check in. Obvious uh, Miles, no wonder, I, I guess her, her name was Mile, but now she's, since there's more than one of her, they... They are, is it they are a reader or they are readers of Medium? Okay, this is a writer for Medium named Sean Ura described his experience with climate doomism, saying in part, quote, I increasingly found myself engaging with even more negative climate change content that became a sort of positive feedback loop where reading one scary sounding article would lead me to an even scarier one. Close quote, I guess he meant going from Michael Campy to Umer Hack. Yura is one example of many people led down the climate doomism rabbit hole. However, Yura's story didn't end there. Now, a climate action coordinator. Yes, now a climate action coordinator. An advocate against the dangers of climate doomism. He says, quote, This is a critical time for humanity. Not in the sense that we'll all die off in a few years, but rather that this is a moment in which we must act boldly and challenge the status quo." Close quote. The call for bold action could not be more correct. The action, this is back to Miles and her imaginary friend, <clears throat> the action our planet needs will not be inspired by fear-mongering which is why climate doomism is so dangerous. It does nothing to help cut carbon emissions or avoid the one and a half degrees Celsius threshold of warming. People must feel empowered that their actions make a difference. 
to fight climate change. We must reduce our carbon emissions to avoid one and a half degrees Celsius of warming. But reducing carbon emissions is going to take a lot of work <coughs> and work will not be achieved if we resign to climate doomism. In Yura's words, we need, quote, bold action, close quote. Bold action, defined by Miles as a mix, a mix of individual actions, policy changes, and accountability from large corporations hmm, contributing to CO2 emissions. Furthermore, politicians are more likely to notice your work with a collective such as local nonprofits or environmental groups, which is why joining community-based grassroots organizations is more important than ever. There is still time to act on climate change. We can create a cleaner, more sustainable future for ourselves and our communities. It is time for us all to take control of our future. There we go. Thank you. Miles Kelsey. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> good for you, Miles and company. Guys, I'm not going to sit here and go off uh, for the next uh, for the next 15 years uh, tearing that uh, thing down. Tearing uh, Miley's Miles, however many people are in Miles' brain, uh, are argument argument part. As I say, I have no desire to change Miles' uh, opinion or, or anybody else's uh, about about why we're so doomed. But for those of you who really are trying to figure out whether we are doomed or not. The answer is we are doomed. Okay, and, and people Miley's age keep calling her Miley uh, are a lot more doomed than I am. Uh, so, okay, but just the, the uh, I said I wasn't going to do it. All right, but j j just some quick points. With the possible exception of not breeding there is no such thing at this point as an individual action that you can take to make one iota of difference in the climate action front. Do whatever you want to do to delude yourself that your uh, individual consumer and lifestyle choices, buy your little electric car, put some damn solar panels on the roof, uh, you know, stop eating meat, uh, all of this crap. If you think, uh, if it helps you sleep better at night and you can get together with all of your little clueless moron, uh, little greeny lefty friends like Miles and her imaginary friends inside her brain at the Tallahassee Democrat. Uh, if, if it helps you sleep better at night, go for it. Uh, it's a accountability, accountability from global corporations. Yes, we can all sit around and wait for that. Uh, what was the other one? Yes, policy changes, meaning, you know, from fossil fuels to the renewable energy. Apparently, Miles has never read bright green lies that bold climate action 
There is no such thing as bold climate action. There is one way to reduce uh, human impacts on, on this globe's climate. That is to reduce the number of humans making impacts on the climate. The one, the only way. Otherwise, you're hopping back and forth between the frying pan and the fire. But if you don't like the frying pan and you prefer the fire and hanging out in the fire instead of the frying pan makes you sleep better tonight, then hop out of the frying pan, go over there to the fire and act like you and your little uh, apocalyptic buddies are doing a damn thing to save this planet. But, and then of course, you know, I mean, there's so many layers to this, which, you know, people like Miles have never considered. And, and, and of course, we're just going to, we're just going to dig down one more layer. One more time. Climate change is one of nine planetary boundaries. The entire the entire debate about climate has just become a red herring from the other eight. Let me say it one more time. If climate change, if humans' impacts on the climate added up to exactly zero, if eight billion humans going about their lives made zero impact on the climate, on global temperatures, on storms, droughts, floods, hurricanes, sea level rise, the whole bit, if none of that was anywhere in the picture, the planet is still doomed. Okay? Uh, and this is what even climate doomers uh, don't even realize. Uh, that they're down here uh, being all doomer gloomer about the climate. Even they don't think about all of the rest of them out there. How many climate doomers have ever heard of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative? I wonder if Miles ha has ever uh, heard of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, which right now is a bigger threat to life on this planet than climate change. <sighs> There is no way to not have a doomed planet with 8 billion people on it. Period. End of discussion. There is no such thing as a sustainable future with 8 billion people on this planet. But anyway, I am going to uh, wrap up this broken record rant. Oh, I realize I am talking to myself. Uh, I wonder if I can figure out a way to send this to Miles. All right, I'm going to get out there and enjoy springtime in Texas by sh shoveling a big pile of wood chips. Bye, guys.